All right, an introduction to map projections. So map projections uh, allow us to project the spherical Earth down onto a two-dimensional map surface. So it helps us to um, understand how uh, the representation of the sphere uh, can end up on a flat. Well, one of the things is to, to look at how you're um, projecting a light ray. So if we project for infin inf an infinity, for example, this light ray coming in would make contact with the globe at this location and project down to this uh, point on the map surface. If we use a stereographic projection at the antipode, the opposite pole of where we're making contact with the map, that this location here would be uh, projected down to the same uh, place on the map. And then if we project from the center of the Earth, um, this location here. So depending on the projection, this location on the map surface will either be represented by this point, this point, or this point. And when you do this, you get some distortion. So for example, if the uh, map was uh, sliced through the Earth, such that um, the projections from the center of the Earth uh, point B would come down to the be represented on the map uh, a little b and a down to little a here. So this long distance on the surface of the Earth would be shrunk or distorted down to a shorter distance on the Earth. Uh, correspondingly, once the map is um, surfaces outside the Earth, that this location D would project outward and E would be projecting outward. So this relatively short distance on the Earth's surface would be stretched. So we either get distortions that uh, stretch or compress are the, the actual correct um, representation on the Earth. And the only place that the map would be exactly correct would be where the map intersects with the, with the Earth's surface. And there are many projections that, that um, can be used for any one particular area. So for example, this is a Minnesota example. And we've got transverse Mercantor, we've got state plane, we've got county coordinate systems. So um, basically we have a, a number of different representations about the same area. And depending on our datum, we could be back in the 1983 datum, North American datum, or we could be using the North American datum uh, 1927. So one particular area could be represented and projected with corresponding distortions uh, in all these different ways. So we can categorize these by the type of surface, by the type of distortion, how much distortion we have, whether it's uh, positive or negative, uh, what the, how the orientation is, and, and the location of the projection source. So the surface, uh, cones, cylinders, and planes. So uh, a conic uh, section would be a cone that would make um, contact with the globe in one location, or if we kind of pushed this cone down inside the Earth, we'd be in, in contact with uh, two, two parallels around the Earth. Here, a cylinder. Uh, this is going to be in contact just with the equator, kind of as it's drawn here, or we could be uh, in contact um, with a meridian, as this one is shown, or down here is a plane. This could be a plane that's taking a slice of the Earth, in which case there would be one circle that would be in contact. Uh, this area would be above the map, and this area would be below. Uh, I'm sorry, this backwards. This area would be below the map, and this would be above. So these surfaces are developable meaning that if you cut the surface and unroll it, that you get a flat, and so that's where we can make a map. So our maps will be sort of as a plane rolled up into a cylinder, or they could be uh, this, this cone cut into a, a conic section. So here's the cone being pushed a little bit inside the Earth, so we have a, a standard parallel around, and so uh, at this intersection the map would be correct, and this intersection would be correct. Uh, in between here and here, the map would be compressed, and here it would be stretched. So uh, you can see that uh, a little bit in this picture. So if I come down here where it's going to be stretched, um, 
what's going to happen is, uh, you know, if, if South America is down here, it's going to appear to be uh, stretched out, and that's exactly what you see in this in this picture. Is that South America looks horrible, uh, but if we go and stay in between the standard parallels, a little bit of compression is is what we're we seem to be able to tolerate. So we have an equatorial um, projection from this standpoint, or we're making tangent in a transverse cylinder in this point. Uh, if we look at this um, from a, a um, an unrolled view, so this is a central meridian, which you know, runs up through here, um, through France. Um, you can see what's going on is that along this line, it's correct. I mean, Antarctica is correct along this line and, and so on. But as you move away very quickly, um, these become distorted. And, you know, South America definitely doesn't look like that. However, this section of Africa looks pretty good, and this section up here looks pretty good. So these distortions um, can go all kinds of different ways. So this is uh, Greenland uh, projected onto the Earth in sort of a three-dimensional view. And then when we project it flat, we can stretch it this way, we could stretch it uh, north-south, and, and, and so on. So um, all of these represent Greenland, but they all are different, uh, different projections, which, which cause us some, uh, uh, depending on what your interest is, to, to show. Okay, so this varies across the map, and uh, like, as I've said, it's, it's correct at the intersection points. Compressed here, stretched there. And so here's a cylindrical, and uh, here these circles uh, are, are still round, so that's, that's correct. Uh, circles become stretched as you move out. So in this case, our, our view of uh, right along the equator is uh, pretty correct. However, you know, Greenland is stretched out, and Antarctica it looks like it's huge, but it's, it's not. Uh, again, in a, in, a, in a conic sense, we get a we get a view pretty good of the northern hemisphere across this region, but Africa and South America are are, are pretty stretched out. So we could do it by orientation, so equatorial orientation or a transverse orientation, and by the location of the light source. So here, uh, you can think of it like the the the. The globe is transparent and these light rays are projecting out and you can see these are equal angles so they should be equal distance on the map except they're not they stretch out so these would be stretched locations here okay so we what type of surface it is conic what the size of the shape of the earth is the ellipsum ellipsoid or datum uh, where do you intersect the ellipsoid and the location of the origin for projection? So all these are, are necessary to, to, to describe um, how, the, how the map is uh, going to be identified. So defining a, an LLC, Lambert Conformal Conic, we have to have an upper and lower parallel. So we specify these values. We also specify the meridian that is going to be the center of the map. And so uh, from a coordinate standpoint, the origin is is right here, where the central meridian touches the map, and where the um, uh, uh, standard parallel touches the map. And again, you need to describe what is your assumption of the spheroid, what's your meridian, and, and what's your origin for projection. It's faster to 